before we get started with writing the sensor code, we need to first go back into our arrow view class. And if we haven't already done so, we need to remove the test code that was put in there previously that hardwired the rotation angle. Now in this tutorial, we're going to calculate the rotation angle. So I'm going to come over here and either delete or comment out this line. Okay, and now we're ready to get started. In this portion of the tutorial, we're going to use a couple of the device's sensors to figure out when our phone has been rotated. And our goal is that each time uh, the phone is, uh, changes its position, we're going to uh, rotate the arrow that we drew on the previous tutorial so that it always points in the north direction. Uh, we want to do this design in an object-oriented way, and we're going to introduce a third class now uh, to help us by uh, building our own custom sensor. So what I've done is I've opened up the uh, project window and I've uh, clicked on the app window, the source window, and the Java window. And we see the, it, this exposes the uh, existing Java files. We currently have two, the arrow view, which uh, creates our arrow, and the main compass activity. So I'm just going to come over here and create a third class now. And we're going to call this the compass, uh, the compass sensor. So now we have this compass sensor class. Now normally when we want to modify an existing class, we would use the word extends here like this, extends uh, sensor. You cannot extend the sensor class because you can see that the, uh, the sensor class is declared to be final uh, in Android. So instead of using this inheritance approach, we're going to show another way in Java that we can create a derived uh, object or class and we're going to use containment. So what that means is that in our compass sensor class we're going to inside of it put a regular Android sensor. Here I've added all the instance variables I'm going to need in this class. I've got a sensor inside of my compass sensor. Uh, this data here is going to hold the uh, information that the uh, sensor retrieves. I'm going to keep track of what type of sensor I am and then there's a boolean variable that tells me whether the sensor has fired or not and we're going to have a reset method that's going to allow us to uh, reload this variable so that we can tell if it's fired since the last time the sensor has been reset. In addition to the instance variables we have a bunch of static variables that we're going to introduce into this class. Specifically while the sensor class is going to keep track of its sensor there's going to be one overall sensor manager that manages all the sensors in the class. The other two static arrays are the data that is associated with the sensor manager. We're going to need this data to calculate the rotation angle. The next thing we're going to need is a constructor. The first thing we do in the constructor is we look to see if the sensor manager has already been created by a previous call to this constructor. So if this is the first time a sensor is being built, we're also going to take care to build the sensor manager and its data as well, where we only uh, do this method, uh, execute this code once uh, inside the class. And once the sensor manager gets created, this code never gets uh, run again. So we create the sensor manager by uh, calling the uh, system service, and then we are going to allocate uh, memory for the data associated with the sensor manager. Here we've initialized all the data for our sensor. We keep track of what type it is. Uh, this is where we actually load the sensor itself. And then we register this uh, sensor so that our parent who called uh, this uh, method is the one that's going to be responsible for reacting when the sensor fires. Here we're loading the sensor itself into the register listener and we're suggesting here that we're going to have a normal delay time between firings. This will uh, guarantee us that the sensor will not fire too often and below here are the data that's associated with this individual sensor. I've added three methods to the compass sensor class. Uh, one that allows the parent to query whether the sensor has been fired since the last time it's been reset. Uh, one is the reset method to uh, say that the uh, sensor is being reset and uh, we're waiting for it to fire again. And this third one to allow the parent to query what data has been collected by the sensor. We've now added an update sensor method. Uh, what happens here is that when the sensor fires, uh, we're going to take the information that the sensor has collected, which is inside this event.values, and we're going to copy it into our local copy, which is the sensor data array. And we're going to mark that this sensor has fired. 
Finally, one last method we're going to add, which is the most important method, and that is the one to calculate the rotation angle. The get rotation angle method is the most complex in our app and takes a little bit of explaining. When we call the get rotation angle method from the parent, it's going to pass along the data that was associated with the two sensors that we use in this app. What this uh, method does is it takes this data and calls this get rotation matrix. The data is passed along here, and even though it's not so clear, the output is actually placed in this rotation matrix uh, static array. Uh, now, if anything bad happens during these calls, the valid flag will come out to be false and will return a safe value of zero for the rotation angle, which will prevent the arrow from being rotated. But most of the time, it's going to work just fine. And so what we're going to do is we're going to first calculate this rotation matrix, and then we're going to take that rotation matrix and get uh, uh, pass it through the sensor manager. And we're going to use that as the input, and it's going to put the rotation angle that we want as the uh, first uh, element in this orientation matrix. I'm going to then take that element from uh, location uh, 0 in the orientation matrix, uh, convert it from radians to degrees, and set that as the return value and return it. Let's now go back and have a look at our main activity class, which we call Compass Activity. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell this class that it is going to be responsible for reacting when the sensors fire. So I've gone ahead and implemented the sensor event listener in this class and immediately Android Studio is complaining that the methods that are required for this interface have not yet been implemented. To make this error go away I've implemented these two methods called onSensorChanged and onAccuracyChanged. Before we fill in those methods let's first flesh out all the other instance variables we're going to need in this class. We're going to need the two sensors, the accelerometer and the magnetic sensor. And we're going to need to keep track of the rotation angle in degrees, which we're going to use to rotate the arrow. I've gone ahead also and added a method to initialize the sensors. So inside the onCreate method, uh, we're going to call this initialize sensor method. And that's going to uh, create the sensors and put them into the instance variables. And we're going to initialize the rotation angle uh, to some safe value. Even though onAccuracyChanged is a required method for this sensor event listener interface, we're not going to be using it for this app, so I've inserted a comment in here saying that this method is to be left blank. The main code that we're going to be writing is inside of this onSensorChanged method. Let's take a look at the code inside the onSensorChanged method. Here I've tried to figure out which sensor got fired, whether it was the accelerometer sensor or otherwise uh, the geo sensor. Those are the only two sensors we have in this app. If we, if the accelerometer got fired, we updated the accelerometer data. If the geo sensor got uh, fired, we updated the sensor in the geo sensor. Uh, after that, once if both sensors are fired, we're going to just check for that condition. We can go about our business of rotating uh, the arrow by calculating the angle. Uh, let's look at how that's done, by the way. So here we're going to call the static function get rotation angle and we're going to pass it the data from the two sensors. we would previously seen in our compass sensor data uh, how this rotation angle is being calculated. Now we're going to take the results of that uh, calculation and we're going to multiply that by negative one for reasons I'll soon explain and then we're going to uh, invalidate the current view. Uh, after setting the rotation angle, the reason we want to invalidate the current, current view is what that will do is it will force the view to get redrawn. The reason why we have to multiply the rotation angle by negative 1 is because if the phone is being turned uh, clockwise, uh, we need to rotate the arrow counterclockwise and vice versa in order to keep it pointing in the same direction. Let's briefly go back and look at this if-else structure here. I'm going to take this code out and replace it with a switch statement to show you another way this can be implemented. This switch statement accomplishes the same thing as the if-else structure we had before. Some coders might prefer it because it makes the addition of new sensors a little bit easier. But the point I want to get across to you, and one of the most subtle but important points in this uh, app development, is that neither of these are a particularly good way uh, to code the sensor update because they are not object oriented. Here is a much better way of coding this functionality. I'm going to get rid of this switch code altogether and what I'm going to do is simply update both sensors and leave it up to them 
to figure out when uh, they should really update or when they should just uh, return without doing anything. So without knowing which sensor needs to be updated, I'm simply going to call update sensor on both sensors. Now I'm just going to make a subtle change inside our compass sensor class and where I had update sensor here before, I'm just going to check to make sure that the event was associated with the current sensor and if it is, I'm going to update it. Otherwise, I'm simply going to ignore the data and just return back to the caller. With that, we are complete building this app and we're going to create an APK file now and put the code into our phone and run it. While I'm doing that, try to figure out why we can't use the emulator to test this app. I've downloaded the app on my phone and it's important for this application that the phone rests on a flat, stable surface. And it's initialized and it's running and I'm going to turn the phone now and hopefully the arrow will reorient itself to pointing in the same direction. And you can see that no matter how much I turn the phone, the arrow basically keeps pointing in the same direction.